Hello, and welcome back to News Time. Wait, shit, no, wait, I want to say hi. Uh, hi, and welcome back to News Time. Or, or is hello better? Hi, h hello. No, fuck it, I'm not going to intro today. Wait, 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 Joshua. You look, who wrote this script? I don't like either of my options, okay? I, I can't choose. Okay, Josh, I'm just a guest anchor. I need you on the screen. Okay, okay. Welcome back to News Time. It's time to play one of our favorite games here at News Time. Who's the worst? On today's episode of Who's the Worst, we'll be looking at Congressional Lizard Man Newt Gingrich, and on the other side, undecided voters. Let's start off with our pal Newt, whose first name is definitely funny, but his last name also deserves some recognition because it sounds sort of like, I don't know, a horrible, uncurable STD. Newt skivered back into our lives this week when he decided to go on the offensive on Fox News. He called Megyn Kelly obsessed with sex after she asked him about Donald Trump's sexual assault allegations. In the fun clip we're about to show you, you can watch a woman being berated for simply mentioning sexual assault while Gingrich defends the person who's actually accused of being a sexual assailant. Trump is At a least, sexual predator. That is... He's not a sexual predator. Okay, you that's can't your say opinion. That. I'm you not taking a position on that it. statement. I, I'm, now, I am I'm not taking a position I'm sick and tired of people it. like you using language that's inflammatory that's not true. And, so what and I think I it's said very is unfair of you to do that, Megan. Incorrect. I think that is exactly the bias people are upset by. You are fascinated with sex and you don't care about public policy. Uh, me? Now that's really? what I get out of watching <laughs> you tonight. And the people down at Fox News questions why it takes so long for victims to come forward. If Megyn Kelly can be shy after simply acknowledging it's a topic of conversation, imagine the further abuse victims endure when they decide to share their experiences. And let's remember, Newt Gingrich is anything but a sex scandal free man himself, despite the fact that he looks strikingly similar to X Factor's uh, Susan Boyle. I'm just saying, no one has ever seen them in a room together. The point is, Newt himself has been involved in multiple affairs and the three marriages during his lifetime in office. One affair happening while Gingrich was Speaker of the House and trying to impeach Clinton over the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Newt was eventually forced to resign because Republicans had lost so many seats in the House during his position because they felt he pushed the Lewinsky thing too far. Mm-hmm, Mr. Sex Obsessed. That's Mr. Sex Obsessed Lizard Man to you. <laughs> so let's move on to our next category, undecided voters. In election season that's as polarizing and as long as this one, it's hard for many to wrap their brains around someone not yet having an opinion. For a while, the undecided voters of America had champion, Ken Bone, but even he has fallen from grace with his lewd Reddit comments, including a comment on Jennifer Lawrence's leaked nude photos, saying he saw her butthole and liked it. Gross. Ken. Gross. At this point, an undecided voter is sort of like that one friend who, when you ask him where they want to go and get dinner, they say, I don't care, you pick. And you go, all right, well, how about we go to Chipotle? And they're like, no, I don't want to go to Chipotle. I don't trust them after the whole E. coli incident. And they're like, uh, okay, well, uh, sandwiches sound good. Let's go to Subway. And they're like, no, I can't go to Subway. I can't support them because Jared Fogle, ugh, creepy. And you're like, damn it, Becky, we have to eat. <sighs> okay. Anyway, the point is, just because you can't get everything that you want is no excuse for you to get up and pick nothing at all. Listen, I'm going to say it. I don't think we should be directing anger at the undecided voters. They're not the villains. The people we should be mad at are those forcing a two-party system down our throats. Americans don't want to vote for the lesser of two evils. Instead, they want to vote for someone who will really represent their ideals. It's obvious two people can't represent a majority of Americans' ideologies. We're seeing more and more people turn to third-party candidates, as well as divides within the Democratic and Republican bases. They've just been exploding through this entire election season. However much I empathize with someone disillusioned with the system, we still have to vote. Millennials are great at posting on social media and not as great at getting to the polls. If you hate both the major options, choose the one you think will serve America better. If your conscience can't allow that, check out a third party. For example, Jill Stein. Jill reminds me of an older version of my hippie barista. Sure, they both have good ideas, but it doesn't mean my barista should be president. But even though I don't think Stein is qualified, if she gets 5% of the vote, the Green Party would be eligible to receive campaign funding from the government, and we could start to see an end to this whole two-party thing. So, who's the worst? Turns out undecided voters aren't the ones that we don't like. It's the people who don't go out and vote at all. 
and Newt Gingrich. <laughs> we'll always hate him. Yeah, do you think he's got like a zipper? In uh, the back of I mean, his... maybe. Anyway, thank you very much for watching News Time. Have a great week, and please vote.